Hey everybody, this is Nintokis again, back with another time lapse drawing. Today we're going to be drawing Draven, or I should say, last month we drew Draven for unlimited score over on Twitch. Mans is a uh, Terry main who's frequenting the Smash arenas, and he's in the Discord. And I put a lot of love in this for him. I believe it was uh, Turn51 who would gift him a sub, so I wanted to have a drawing time lapse that showed both the line art and my coloring process. Uh, my coloring process is a complete freaking mess, so I apologize for anybody who's actually experienced in the arts for my process. Uh, today, I'm going to try something a little bit different. I'm going to let the drawing do a little bit more of the talking this time around. I don't want to keep the pressure on to keep yelling into your eardrums, especially because I have not played very much League of Legends, but we'll see how that works out. I do these off the cuff anyway. As you can see here, uh, this is something that a lot of artists should know, especially budding artists, is sometimes you're going to have to redo a lot of things through the process of a drawing, especially when you're drawing somebody else's IP and you notice things that you may have gotten wrong initially. You saw right there I had to completely redo the stomach area, and I believe I have to redo the belt buckle at one point as well. I don't know what happened. I guess. I was just a little preoccupied while I was drawing this, and I just drew something completely wrong. And that happens. Sometimes you just interpret something differently, and other times you just have a reference image that has something slightly different. I'd noticed between drawing Riven, Karthus, and Draven that they have a lot of different costumes, and I had accidentally grabbed multiple images that looked the same, but they were just slightly different, so each of those drawings ended up being a little bit of a collection of uh, a couple of their different costumes. I, I hope you Hardcore League fans don't mind. <laughs> this belt buckle I actually had a lot of fun with, both sarcastically and legitimately. There was something I'd realized partway through where I wasn't actually layering it correctly, and that's something I'm really learning is how to manipulate all this like all these objects in a 2d space but make it look three-dimensional so it's actually popping forward and has some depth to it and when you really start thinking about drawings that way instead of just kind of getting something on a 2d plane the effort does show but it ends up making some things a little bit more of a headache and while it isn't perfect i do like the way it came out in the end Another thing I really, really tried to do with this belt is I tried to vary the line width a lot here, or the line weight, I should say. Um, there was something an instructor of mine told me where, or an example he gave me rather, where in order to get a thicker line weight, or get a sense when a thicker line weight makes sense, is if you see an ant crawling along the side of an object, if it crawls over the other side and you don't see it anymore, like onto another side of the surface, that's when it should be thicker to kind of signify a very definitive edge to something. So you can see there's a lot of bits that are closer to the camera that normally you would want to make thicker, but because you can see both sides of it, I kind of leave thinner. Uh, looking at it now, it's not perfect. I don't know if I go back and edit that, but there was a lot of detail going into this drawing, so I may have gotten lost a little bit. <laughs> We're getting into the coloring now, and one thing that kind of messed me up while I was coloring was the ponytail and the long mustache. I had omitted it for a while in the line art, and then I had to like hastily draw it back in. And from the initial sketch, I even wanted it like waving in the wind, but I felt like it kind of messed up the silhouette a little bit more. But in a lot of the League art, I notice his ponytail isn't that prevalent, so I opted to just have it kind of draped over his shoulder, especially because he's got that large, like fuzzy. Not really a headdress, more like a shoulder dress, but you know, all that wonderful fluff and I didn't want to overcomplicate the silhouette or take away from either of those elements by having them all flailing in the wind like crazy, so I had to settle somewhere. <laughs> And basically what I'm doing here is I'm just getting all the base colors in and after this I start to do a paint over of them, I start to add the light, the shadow, that sort of thing. Um, since doing this drawing, even in a month's time, I've changed how I do this just a little bit. 
I try to just get one base layer in and I've tried to just paint over it in one layer and I've done that to varying degrees of success honestly but for this drawing in particular there were a lot of different things going on with Draven's design anybody who sees him knows it's like a mess of like all these belts and loops but I tried to constrain which colors I used to a specific palette which is something I'm not used to doing but every good artist should because uh, using too many colors in one drawing it kind of distracts. I know there's a whole color theory thing behind it. Honestly, his tiara is something that caught me by surprise. Like, I just sort of drew it, and I forgot to detail it in the line art, so I had to go back while coloring and, uh, you can see me bring up the reference image one more time where I kind of had to just refigure it out. And that happens a lot while you're drawing. And I believe I said it in another video where sometimes you just have to change things as you go, no matter how far in you get. And this was definitely the case for Draven in a lot of respects. Like, I don't think I altered anything more than I did his, uh, I don't even know if it's a tiara, a crown. It's something. <laughs> it's a headdress of some sort. But I, I did have to go back in and mess with it, but I do quite like how it turned out in the end. And right there, you can see I actually messed up the sleeve. I got a little bit too lost in the details again, but I recovered. <laughs> Alright, and for these elements, it was a little bit tricky for me to get uh, light and shadow on, especially the uh, bracers and the gloves. A lot of artists don't recommend using any type of just black or gray value for something, though sometimes it's just unavoidable. But what they tend to do, I've noticed, is when they shade it, they use a purple or a blue instead of just a darker black, just to add a little bit more variety and life to the drawing without limiting yourself to what the darkest tone in the entire composition is. And I struggled a little bit because, as you saw, I also had those armbands purple as well, so I had to really figure out what I was doing there. And something I know now but didn't know then was sometimes just switching the image to grayscale helps you figure out how well valued your drawing is. But that's a tip for you guys, and if I could go back in time, I would tell myself that. But, um, you know, what's done is done. <laughs> One thing I owe my life to for these Twitch drawings is I have gotten pretty decent at texturing and like giving value to skin tone and I don't know where that came from I think I first did it with the doom guy drawing and honestly it's something I really enjoy and didn't know how to do very well before and even in this drawing I'm like I'm still learning I struggle a little bit with getting the abs looking correct but in terms of like the face and the tricep I'm quite proud of how those turned out and even like the neck going down there's something about it that just feels very tangibly like skin where it needs to and that's something I've struggle with when I color is adding the posture like just getting a good feel for what a certain like texture is or a certain material that's the word um, another thing I really did learn from these and you'll see later I thought I lost the footage but upon editing I found out I had it is when I shade the uh, fluffy headdress I talked about the white um, between this uh, the King DDD drawing and there was also a fusion of King Dedede and Donkey Kong where he still has King Dedede's like overcoat it has that same type of fluff and I found a charcoal brush in Sketchbook Pro that I adore for that texture and I just something about it it just works so simply and it gets such a great effect so I'm waiting for it to come up it doesn't come up for a little bit though but here's those bracers where I was experimenting how to shade it with purple rather than a darker black just to give it a little bit more life but you can see I cave there a little bit, like I get really, really dark with the purple, just to separate it from the armband, and I think I did okay. I think I might add a little bit of a, a highlight to that armband to make it further stand out from the bracer, but I forget. Another tricky thing about drawing faces is the teeth. I forget where I read it, I read it a long time ago, is... To be very conservative with the amount of detail you add in the teeth just because it can ruin a whole drawing like if you mess up the teeth or add too much like strange details to them or too many strange details to them rather something about it just doesn't look right like it just dives straight into uncanny valley 
and it ruins the whole thing. And I think I might have put a little bit too much detail into the teeth, but it doesn't take away from the face, I don't believe. And passing me by ever so quickly, there it is, the tiara. Going back in and adding all the detail when I color, which is something up until this point I had a lot of trouble with. For some reason, I just, I wanted everything in line art and it would drag out my process so much. To anybody who is jumping into digital coloring or digital painting, please just do that thing. It took me so long to just digitally paint rather than rely so much on line art to lay that foundation. Because that's exactly what it should be. It should be a foundation. It shouldn't be the end all for every last detail in here because not everything needs to be, you know, dictated by a line. And I think that breaking yourself free from that constraint really can send you on a wonderful rabbit hole to improve your work. At least it has for me personally. One thing I've also noticed is utilizing the glow layer or the glow layer type for metals, iron, gold. And what I've started doing recently for these last couple of color drawings is I've actually started going over the line art with it to break up the lines and make it look like it's shining that much more. Oh, here's that wonderful charcoal tool for the uh, fluff as well. But I've noticed that using that glow layer to kind of accent those pieces of metal, it's a godsend. For some reason, I kept trying to use like a light layer or a screen layer and it just wasn't working out for me, but glow over the line art, like prioritizing it over the line art was just, it's key. And my tip to anybody else would be, don't leave your line art on the top layer like I had for so long. Oh man, I I'm still learning coloring. I, I will be the first to admit that I'm not the best at it, but I'm getting some good results. I'm kind of falling into a style of my own. And the most important thing that I've learned in the last couple months is to treat a digital image file like just that. I've been dabbling a lot in Photoshop and I've been using the tools available in Sketchbook Pro at the end of these to kind of unify all the colors at the end. There I get all the layers together into one grayscale version and then I start duplicating that and adding a whole bunch of effects to it and layering them on top of each other. Again, just to make all of the colors a little less scattered, add some lighting effects in here. But uh, that is Draven right at the end there. And I love that, but uh, where would I be without my patrons? Diana, Tiana, Draconic Overlord, and Elena, thank you guys so much. If you want more information about that, you can click on the icon here or in the description box. Thank you again for waiting. This video took forever, and uh, thanks for sticking around. Take care, guys.